Today on the spot. We check out the new releases hitting store shelves and check out the character creator in Rock Band 3. Finally, we get a fresh take on a classic with our multiplayer demo of GoldenEye 007 on the Wii. Today on the spot. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Today on the Spot. It's Tuesday, October 5th. Homer Ibarra once again in the seat. And sitting right next to me is the internet's own Kevin Van Ord. Kevin, what's going on, man? I belong to the internet, is that what you're saying? You, there's no, you don't belong to anybody except for the internet. I am my own man, Homer. Well, that's arguable. Yeah, well. Anyways, we got an exciting show today. Do we, we got, really? Dude, we have some golden eye. Really? Yes. Tell me even more. We're bringing it back to the old school. Uh, you know, this. I'm, I'm hearkening back to some days when I was back in college, to when you know all that mattered was actually playing that game, and that's it. Really? Those yeah. were smoky days. Anyways, Kevin, those were hazy days back in my college career. But like I said, we have a great show. We went to Boston, Massachusetts to go check out Rock Band 3. But before we get to all that, Tor Thorson's got the latest headlines. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's your GameSpot news update for Tuesday, October 5th. I'm Tor Thorson. Last night, Panasonic unveiled an all-new handheld it hopes can take on the PSP and DS. Called the Jungle, the device will support a full QWERTY keyboard, touchpad, D-pad, and shoulder buttons. Where the Jungle will differ from other handhelds is its focus on online gaming, specifically browser-based massively multiplayer titles. The device is being cross-moded with the upcoming title Battlestar Galactica Online, which will launch this fall. As for the device itself, its release date is currently unknown, and its price has yet to be announced. In other news, those who missed out on the Grand Theft Auto 4 phenomenon will soon be able to pick up the award-winning game and its two expansions in one package. According to Amazon and GameStop product listings, Grand Theft Auto 4 Complete will hit the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 on October 26. The package will include Grand Theft Auto 4, The Lost and Damned, and The Ballad of Gay Tony for just 40 bucks. Heck of a deal. Finally, Activision is jumping on the 3D bandwagon. The publisher announced this morning that Call of Duty Black Ops will support 3D right out of the box. Remember though, you'll need a fancy 3D enabled HDTV and 3D glasses for the console versions and Nvidia's 3D technology for the PC. That or you could just play in glorious 2D. Well that's it, your GameSpot news update for Tuesday, October 5th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. Okay, thanks for that news update tour. Now, there's a bunch of new releases coming out this week. A it's ton of stuff. Yes. The, the holidays are right around the corner, hence a releasing of a plethora of games. Yeah, it's a good time for me to go and waste my money on games that then sit on my shelf for a while and I forget to play. Exactly, one game so, coming out this week, new, uh, Castlevania. Castlevania, somebody yes. got some God of War in my Castlevania. Yeah, Giancarlo is reviewing that, right? Absolutely, he already reviewed it. Check out the review on the site. Check out the review Absolutely. on the site. But before we get to all that, let's go check out the new releases coming up this week. This week in new releases, last week's new release slate was spearheaded by zombies and soccer, but this week's focus is vampires and basketball. Taking the alpha spot this week is Castlevania Lords of Shadow. First teased in March 2008 and formally announced during the 2009 Electronic Entertainment Expo, the game drops Tuesday, October 5th for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Lords of Shadow is set in the year 1047 and follows Gabriel Belmont, who's a member of the Brotherhood of Light. Gabriel's quest involves roaming the land in pursuit of pieces of an artifact that can bring the dead back to life. Also dropping this week is Visual Concepts NBA 2K11 for Xbox 360, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PSP, and Wii. Legendary Hall of Famer Michael Jordan graces the title's cover and is featured in the game as a playable character. The game also includes a handful of Jordan challenges, including the infamous flu game. In this 1997 NBA final game, Jordan was violently ill and still managed to tally 39 points to win. Players will have to match that feat to unlock additional goods. Although NBA Elite 11 has been indefinitely postponed, EA Sports will still be slamming the hardwood with NBA Jam. The arcade basketball title is due out exclusively on the Wii this week, and Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions are due out by the holidays. The game is a revival of the well-regarded 1993 arcade game of the same name, and has been updated with new visuals and gameplay changes. The title sports two distinct modes, Classic and Remix Tour, where gamers can play either in a traditional manner or with an array of new power-ups. Ninja Theory's Enslaved Odyssey to the West is due out this week on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Set in post-apocalyptic America, the game tells the story of the muscular monkey and techno-savvy Trip as they work together to escape their robot overlords while trying not to kill each other. 
Also releasing this week is the Wii exclusive Wii Party. Having come out in Japan in early July, Wii Party marks Nintendo's first stab at the party genre since 2007's Mario Party 8. The title is composed of 13 distinct game modes and packs over 70 minigames. Shifting to the music game space, Konami is bringing Def Jam Rapster to the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii this week. The Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions of the game will come bundled with the game in a wired mic for $69.99, while the Wii package costs $59.99. Aspiring MCs can sing along with 45 songs from artists like Kanye West, Nelly, and Notorious B.I.G. The game also features a freestyle mode in which gamers can drop their own rhymes over tracks laid down by a variety of hip-hop producers. For further details on the week's games, visit GameSpot's new releases page. Release dates are based on retailer listings and are subject to change. New releases brought to you by Best Buy. Bring your games to Best Buy and get more trade-in power with select games worth $20 and up in gift cards you can use store-wide. Hey everyone, Giancarlo Veronini here. Welcome to your daily demo of GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo Wii. I'm joined by James Lodato from Activision, who's going to give us a little bit of a rundown on the multiplayer part of GoldenEye, which is obviously a very popular part of the original game as well. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to see here? Are we going to see aspects from the original game in this game as well, as along with some new stuff? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we took great care to make sure that the multiplayer was a really quintessential part of the GoldenEye experience. So what we're going to do today, we brought in some four-player split-screen. So we're going to have uh, people here in the studio jump in and play. Um, what we're going to jump into now is um, four players playing one of the classic modes, Golden Gun. So in the map, there's going to be the Golden Gun hidden. It's a one-shot, one-hit uh, kill. Um, we're jumping into uh, the outpost level, which is in Severnaya. It's a snowy level. It's cool there. Um, and we're just going to see how things go. And another thing too is that, uh, like the previous game, you have modifiers too, right? So yes. you can go in and add all kinds of crazy stuff to just this, this match type if you want to. Yeah, and what's cool about the modifiers is we have uh, 17 different modifiers you can choose from, uh, but they're not mutually exclusive. In other words, you won't have one on and the rest off. You can mix and match them. So for this game, we've turned on paintball mode, which replaces all the bullet shells with big paintball splatter, which is just kind of a fun way to go about it. But we can also turn on something like what we call move your feet. And Move Your Feet's a very interesting mode because at, if the player stands still for more than three seconds, they automatically die. Oh, so Which no. sounds kind of harsh, yeah. but if you're in a bigger map and you have people who like to be sniping up in the corner somewhere, and you know, you want to kind of even the playing field a bit, they now have to change their tactics. Nice. So um, we can turn both of those on, and like I said, we've done the math with uh, how many different modifiers you can turn on and off, and it's, something, it's in the hundreds of how wow. many different game types there are, so there's really something here for everyone. Cool. All right, well then, let's jump right into the uh, multiplayer match with the uh, Golden Gun on the Outpost map. Cool. And obviously, it looks like you can select uh, some very famous Bond characters from the various movies. Uh, yeah, very much so. We have over 50 different characters you can choose from. Um, including none the least of which are classic characters from the Bond movies. Uh, examples being like uh, Rosa Klebb and Baron Samity and um, Dr. No, Blofeld. So some of you will recognize that not necessarily from the GoldenEye movie, but from the Bond universe. And in addition to those eight classic characters, we also have uh, over 40 different uh, in-game characters you can choose from. So once again, there's a lot of choices here. And you can choose different loadouts for your characters. Yeah, there's over 25 different weapons in the game, uh, including uh, you know different types of grenades, uh, proximity mines, uh, and some of the uh, modifiers also change the physics on those. So one of the things we have is rubber grenades or sticky grenades. So you can change your tactics there nice. with those. So I mean, like I say, when you really do the math on this, there's just so many different types of gameplay. All right, cool. Well, let's have our guys pick their loadouts, their characters, and let's jump into a uh, multiplayer match. Cool. So here we go, the start of, start of our match, and since this is Golden Gun, it's one shot, one kill. Yes, yeah, so whoever gets to the Golden Gun first has the one shot, one kill. It looks like player two is just about to snag it. Nice odd job, don't, don't mess this up. <laughs> yes, odd job is back as well, and he can throw his hat, so odd job with the Golden Gun can be a bit of a deadly combination. <laughs> but as a... With Golden Gun, it's first come, first served, so whoever can get to it first has the advantage. Oh, and I think I actually took Ajab out and have the Golden Gun oh, now. Very nice. 
And you can see the uh, paintball effect on the walls there. Yeah, so we turned the paintball modifier on, which like I said, is just, um, just something fun to, to change it up a bit. The sound effects change for the, for, the, um, for the bullet shots, but also the decals. Dude, do not mess with me. Oh, I have wow. the golden gun. Jeez, Josh just got it in the <laughs> face. Oh, I see hats are flying. <laughs> I've been spotted. Oh, there I go. And obviously, when you're playing a match, there are things you can do. I mean, you can, you know, change. If you come across other weapons, you can pick them up. Sure, you can pick up weapons in the environment. You can switch your loadout mid, <laughs> mid match. Uh, which, you know, you'll respawn with n the new stuff next time you come in. Um, you know, we also have uh, uh, contact-sensitive uh, environment pieces now. So you'll see uh, a prompt come up with just a low piece of cover. You can actually vault over things, jump over stuff, jump from a high up level to a lower level without having to go around the geometry. So now you can actually interact with the environment pieces as well. So and then when a match ends too, you actually get to see sort of like accolades that you've yeah. accomplished over the course So this of the is just uh, a cool thing for bragging rights. Uh, at the end of the match, we have over 50 different ac accolades that can be earned uh, for the most this or the least amount of that. So uh, I was able to get uh, the double O agent accolade, <clears throat> which is the uh, most lethal and most accurate. Very nice. But uh, some of the other ones uh, are, are less complimentary. Uh, but there's something in there, like I said, over 50 different ones that are awarded at the end of each match. Very cool. And uh, what are we looking at in terms of a release date for GoldenEye on the Wii? GoldenEye on the Wii will be uh, available November 2nd in North America and November 5th in Europe. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, James. Thank you. Cool. Well, that about wraps it up for our daily demo of some multiplayer action GoldenEye 007 for the Wii. Uh, now on with the rest of the show. Okay, so a third Rock Band's coming out, but not necessarily the third game, but Rock Band 3. Rock Band 3, the big one in the, the big, big series. Yes, there's like uh, keyboards, right? Keyboards, keyboards, good start. Homer, I've been waiting for something more like Symphony Orchestra. Okay, wait, you know I'm a violinist, right? You are a violinist. I went to school to study violin, mm -hmm. so uh, I want, I want uh, a full set of like everything. Violin and French horn and trombone and flute and clarinet, bassoon. I want my plastic bassoon. Bring it on. Plastic bassoon? Absolutely. Oh, how would you do the star thing? You know, like where the... Who how would you? Yeah, you would do that? Absolutely. Or would you spit? Is, I don't know, you is just that, do a little whir whirly gig in the middle. Like, bassoon players are very flexible. They have to be. You know how big that thing is? That thing is, is gigantic. Yeah. I don't, know, read, I don't got, know if I have enough space in my apartment. Well, they got great lungs, too. Well, that's, that's a whole other issue. Rock Band 3, folks! <laughs> Um, in Rock Band 3, we've altered uh, the look of pretty much everything. Um, the shell got an entire revamp, uh, the characters got revamped, the venues all look different. And again, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you'll see from the old Rock Bands in the new Rock Band, but they've all been touched. The character creator was um, pretty exciting for us on this project. Um, the uh, character lead himself was pretty passionate about doing it in the beginning. Um, so we did some very early prototypes that were exciting. That sort of goes across the boards. We fleshed out uh, the types of bodies that you can make now and uh, the amount of detail that you can put into the bodies while still keeping in the general style of Rock Band. Um, we went pretty deep on the, the heads and faces. Um, there's an entire uh, creator set for the faces now that in addition to the kind of hair and makeup and facial hair that we used to do, the, you can now really adjust and alter the, the face of the character, male or female. Artistically, um, we wanted to uh, kind of take our idealized sculptural characters, the rock star aesthetic that we had established in Rock Band 1 and 2, and basically just give it one more level of detail. Um, we didn't want to get to the point where the characters had veins and, and freckles and things like that. Uh, we still wanted them to look kind of like living dolls, you know, um, kind of perfect people. So what we c kind of tried to do is do anatomy, do more anatomy than we did in the past, but um, do a sort of a simplification sculpture pass on it, imagining it, it's one of those kind of semi-abstracted sculptures where all the little wrinkles are smoothed out, but the underlying forms are there. So your nose might 
um, not have the little bump that a real nose has, but it, it might have a nice smooth line running down it instead. We can, you can do a lot of the same stuff you could do before. You change your hairstyle, beards, um, you can choose different body types. Um, but now you can choose your body types with sliders, and so you can add muscle mass or remove muscle mass, and you can get um, taller and shorter. You can, we also have a more robust face creator where instead of just choosing a head, you can dig in and start picking individual face pieces. You can choose your eyes, um, move the eyes farther apart, closer together, rotate them. Um, you can choose a different nose. Um, you can move that around on the face a little bit. And so all, for all the different parts, nose, chin, mouth, eyebrows, jawline, you, all, you have some amount of control. You should have a lot of fun with it. And you should be able to make a character that looks something like an idealized version of yourself. Everything is getting better lit. Um, we're, we want to have people connect with the characters better, um, and we want to put the characters more front and center for the player um, so they can feel that connection and, and, and feel like they really want to invest time in, in creating characters. One thing that occurred to us while we were designing the game was it's really fun to see your characters playing the music, but um, if you're the one concentrating on the music, it tends to be hard to actually see your own character that you've made. It's great in party situations and multiplayer and stuff like that. But um, Pete had a, an idea to move into this whole vignette system where we have outside of gameplay scenes where you see your band doing things. Now, it's cool because it links back to our character creator. You get to see all the hard work you, you put into making your character and your band in a way where you're relaxed, you're not matching any gems or music at all, you're just watching things go by, but it also went back to a really important element of, that, we, that we created in Rock Band 1, which was make people feel like they are in a rock band. And you know, when you're holding the Strat and you're playing the drums and you're hearing the music and you're watching the crowd go crazy, that went a really long way, but it's kind of awesome to see it take the next step, which is like, I see my band playing in a crappy club and they're getting paid and they're not getting paid enough and they're getting like in little back and forths with each other. Um, they're riding around in the tour van and getting into like the kind of hijinks that we've gotten in when we were on tour and it's kind of like famous, this famous story is about touring. We're not telling you a story. It's not like you're playing a game with a specific character where you're watching people that clearly aren't you unless you made them look like you, which you can totally do. Uh, but you know, there's, there's, a, there's a line there between um, reality and in-game that is kind of blurry in a way that lets you stay, stay connected. Okay, folks, it's time for trivia, your favorite time of the program. We have this Call of Duty Black Ops hoodie, courtesy of Treyarch. Check it out, Kevin. It's it looks pretty, pretty awesome. awesome. You know what's gray what's that? and black? It's gray and black. You got a dude here. He's looking rather aggressive. We got a uh, Treyarch. Or we no, we got a skull. This side is this got this got trail. Yeah. This side has black out. I'm confused. I'm all turned around because I got the thing backwards. Anyways, if you want to win this hoodie, answer me this question. What is the name of the demo Sean McInnes wrote about in the preview of the game at Gamescom 2010 in Germany? If you think you know the answer, please click on the green answer trivia button right there on the side or send us an email at onthespot at gamespot.com and we will send you this killer Call of Duty Black Ops sweatshirt. Okay, that about wraps up today's show. Kevin, um, we, what do we got on Thursday's show? Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we'll find out what's on Thursday's show on Thursday. So for the rest of the GameSpot crew, I'm Homer Ibarra. And I'm Kevin Van Ord. We'll see you then. So like I said, we have a very busy show today. We went all the way to Bass. Up, we got uh, Rock Band Three. We went all the way out to Boston's Mass, Boston's Massachusetts. Oh, at least that's better than the mildly racist Batston.